welcome to this episode of Psych Media. Now, today we're going to be talking about Fraggle Rock's interlocking macrocosm community and how that illustrates an ecological system's perspective. Okay, I know that sounds confusing, but hey, worries are for another day. So a bit of background on Fraggle Rock. Debuting in 1983 and running to 1987, it was a joint production between U.S., U.K., and Canadian companies and Jim Henson Productions, and it was always intended for the international market. The main premise of the show revolves around four sentient species that share the same environment but don't realize that they are connected and interdependent. Fraggles, doozers, gorgs, and humans function in a varying cooperative community. Now, it shouldn't surprise you that a Jim Henson production had underlying educational themes of prejudice deconstruction, personal identity, conflict, relationships, the environment, and empathy. Henson once said that the show's purpose was to teach an entire generation to hate war. Most countries are familiar with the human inventor Doc and his dog Sprocket, who provided kind of a framing device for each episode. But in the UK, he's a retired sea captain living in a lighthouse. In Germany, Doc is also an inventor, but in France, he's a baker with his dog Croquette. The Fraggles, Doozers, Gorgs, and other minor characters remain the same in all international versions, but have been dubbed into over 10 languages. Thus, the show achieved both localization and universality, as episode themes were allegories that were easily understood despite language. The childlike Fraggles love to spend their time singing, dancing, playing, relaxing, just generally having fun. However, there are clearly defined roles and duties in their society, and they adhere to these with the same enthusiasm they show towards their play. In contrast, the minuscule doozers are industrious. Their highly structured society is focused on endless construction and architecture. Now, while they pride themselves on personal responsibility, their social norms are more collectivist, very much for the greater good. The giant gorgs, a family of three, live in a small house with a garden, and while they proclaim themselves king, queen, and prince of the universe, no other gorgs ever appear in the series, and it's very possible they're the only gorgs that remain. Location ties these species together. Both Fraggles and Doozers live in a cavern system connected on one end to the human world through a hole in Doc's wall and to the gorg's garden on the other. Thus, changes to one environment affect them all, highlighted by an episode when Doc poured chemicals down his drain, which polluted the shared water source of the other species. Radishes from the Gorg's Garden are vital to survival, as they're the main feature in the Fraggle diet, the main ingredient in Doozer construction material, and the Gorgs use them to create a medicinal salve that prevents them from becoming invisible. Without radishes, all would perish. So that's the world of Fraggle Rock. But you might be wondering about some of those really neat terms I used during the intro. Well, a macrocosm is a complex structure featuring smaller independent parts, like worlds within worlds, or the smaller societies that make up Fraggle Rock. The main attraction of today's episode, though, is ecological systems theory. Now, I know, I know, it sounds like it belongs in our episode on Captain Planet or at some corporate strategy seminar, but I promise you it is so much cooler. Ecological systems theory defines the five ecosystems that surround an individual. These systems are usually represented as concentric circles, showing how closely they affect a person. Family and friends are closer and more influential than, say, economics or culture. Now, this model can also be used to describe a child's awareness of the world as they develop. This model holds up for each species of the show, imagining a character at the center, for example, Gobo Fraggle, surrounded by his fellow Fraggles, his cavern environment, the doozers, the gorgs, then the silly people, as Fraggles describe the humans of outer space. More abstract concepts like group conflicts, personal understanding, societal norms, and even religion populate that outer ecosystem and affect the characters systematically through each episode's theme. Oh, speaking of religion, all of the species have their own cultural beliefs, observances, and celebrations, but these seem to occur outside of organized religion. The Fraggles seek advice from Marjorie, the wise, all-knowing trash heap, but she acts more as an oracle or an elder figure than an actual deity. So we have all these levels of interaction in a macrocosm that fit nicely into a psychological model to describe those interactions. This is a social science reflection of how species interconnect in any biological ecosystem. Plants, animals, insects, and microorganisms are physically interdependent, so here the sentient species are culturally and psychologically connected. No matter the distance from the center, each level still eventually affects the individual, and this show is an elegant example. Humans populate that furthest ecosystem. While Sprocket the dog can see Fraggles, Doc can't. One Fraggle, Traveling Matt, explores the human world and sends his findings back to Fraggle Rock, though he clearly interacts with the humans around him. We could hypothesize that Doc's society has blinded him to the extent that he couldn't accept the existence of any other sentient creatures. Indeed, it's an expression of sentience and empathy between Doc and the Fraggles that finally connects him to the rest of the macrocosm. The last two episodes of the show bring everything together in a way that still makes me tear up. 
the relationship between all four species becomes apparent to them as each extends personal identity and empathy to the others, finally understanding their part in the system. Okay, real talk. Why is any of this important? Well, this analysis goes beyond fan theory because we know the creators of Fraggle Rock not only intended for these themes to be present, but for them to be obvious in a meaningful way for both older and younger viewers. Children learn by example, an automatic process called social modeling. And Jim Henson was one of the pioneers of children's educational television who understood that. Seeing the connection between things translates to understanding it, and hopefully to recreating it. A child who understands that everyone has a personal identity, be they Fraggle, Doozer, or Gorg, can understand that every human has a personal identity, no matter how different they may be. And as the species of Fraggle Rock all share the same environment, they can accept that we humans all share the same planet. What about you? Did Fraggle Rock or another show change how you saw the world around you and your part in it? Which of the species did you feel the most connection to? Let me know in the comments. Small channel announcement, but I wanted to personally welcome all the new subscribers and thank you for helping me to keep the channel monetized. I work a few jobs to be able to manage the PhD and this is one of them, so thank you so much. Well, that's been this episode of Psych Media. Please like and subscribe if you feel moved to do so. And if you did want to support myself or the show, there's a link to my Patreon in the description box below. Bye now. Thank you to the following patrons with an especial thank you to Gomer, Nate Watson, and Ed Pelnick.